confidence because there's so many different kinds of hats you can do on there. So we're going to go really in depth. And uh, then we're going to have a, a guest from Madeira. Her name is Nancy. She is going to show you guys how to do foam embroidery on hats using our Gen 2 cat frame. So mm -hmm. that's really exciting. We're very excited to have Nancy. Yeah. And uh, after she's done, we'll have some time for some questions. And then Justin, one of our really great customer service reps, is going to show you guys back of caps. And then we'll wrap up for today. So Clayton and I are going to dive right yeah. in. We're going to show you guys the Gen 2. So I think we're going to start with unstructured hats. You want to move the camera right? Yeah. So I'm going to flip this around and put the attention on him so that you guys can see everything he's doing. Okay. Um. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So um, maybe step over this way a little bit so we can we can actually show my framing station. So. Uh, I'm going to start by just discussing our framing station. Uh, this thing is great. It's what we use here in the office, um, and we have a lot of customers that use this as well. Uh, it's adjustable in a couple of different ways. Uh, so the feet on this are adjustable if your floor is a little unlevel. Uh, and then these down here. Uh, then the actual mounting bar itself is adjustable as well. Um, I'm six three. My wife is somewhere in the area of five six five seven. Uh, so this bar actually goes all the way down to a really low level. There's five different settings, and then up to a level that I usually use, but since we're both going to be on this cap frames today, uh, I'm going to leave it right here in the middle. Uh, then we are going to discuss our uh, T-bar framing gauge, which will go on any table. It doesn't need to mount on our framing station, but this just makes it very easy. It's actually set out perfectly so that you can close down the gauge right on the framing station. And it'll tighten down just like that for you. Okay. I'm going to get a closer shot of you tightening that down so everyone can see yeah. how you did that. So th there's just a little wing nut here. Very easy to loosen and tighten. And it'll actually go all the way down to fill up the majority of the space if you have a very thin table. So will you pull it off and then put it on one more time? Yeah. So it, it, it goes on there like a vice would. Exactly. Yep. And then you just tighten it. <clears throat> Perfect. So uh, this T-bar is essential to what we show you with hats. Um, from everything from a structured to unstructured hat, where we show these very large designs, uh, the majority of how we get these designs is solely based on this framing gauge. Uh, it's a large percentage of how we do this. It's because every hat's different. And you guys know that if you're doing hats, uh, if you're doing an unstructured hat, it's going to be much different than a flex fit. And a flex fit's going to be different than a Richardson. Uh, every one of these hats are created differently. And even within those hats, if you're doing the same kind of flex fits, there's variation within those. So we like to be able to adjust this. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to discuss our laser alignment tool, which is very easy. Um, looks like we might have actually left this on and ran out of battery. So we'll, we'll update that and, and show it to you. Uh, but it's, it goes on here very easily. Uh, it allows you to lay a directly straight line uh, on every single hat, regardless of the style. So starting out here, I think we're going to start with an unstructured hat. Uh, it should make this very easy. So we're going to set the frame on there just like that. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to come in at kind of a 45 degree angle until you hit the clips and then just drop it down. So do it one more time. So these these here that you guys can see, these little tabs, that's what he's hooking on to. And I, I really just kind of hit it up against the back of this so that it falls nice and easy on there. Yep. Yep. That's great. Uh, for the majority of these hats, we're going to use our uh, three and a half by 11 backing. <laughs> uh, it slides directly underneath the tabs like that. So it'll actually hold it in place for you. So for those of you that are used to sending in a hat with the backing into your frame and doing things like this, we're going to eliminate all of that issue, right? We're going to make this very easy on you. So just send it underneath the tabs on both sides. We have these little notches here that we're going to push through. That's actually going to grab the material of the hat as we go to use this T-bar to stretch the, the material. Yeah, and this is pre-cut backing. We actually do sell it with our cap frame orders. 
we sell um, a thousand sheets for forty eight ninety five. So we find that the pre cut just makes it a little bit easier and saves us a step. Yeah. Uh, normally with our unstructured hats, I like to start with it, you know, the frame just showing a little bit well, so underneath the backing. So it's just an easy adjustment here. So you just twist that open. Okay. That'll loosen this to where you can move it in and out. And then when you get it to the position that you like, which normally, like I said, is just showing a little bit outside of the backing for me uh, on these unstructured hats, I'll just tighten it back down. Pull out your sweatband. We're going to send one side in underneath the, the tab on this side and underneath on the other side as well. Okay. I'll let do a little stop there and let her show you kind of where we're at. Yeah. Slide that on one more time. So yeah, we're going to go in one and then inside the other. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Now, if you find here that you're falling a little too high on the hat, which it seems like maybe I am, I'm actually just going to take this, shorten it up a little bit. So then I actually should be able to get it right where I want it. Just, just over top of the eyelets. So we've got a nice sewing registration and a great field to work with. Uh, at this point, I'm going to take the T-bar, take my, my pointer fingers on both hands, and just spread the material out on the hat. There's like a, there's a little, there's a little pocket here that I like to get my fingers into. That's going to make this very easy for me to slide this T-bar in. And then we're just going to stretch the material from there. I like to keep the pressure down because that's going to actually lay this material nice and flat for you. What you're seeing right here, we have no flagging. There's no wrinkles in here, which with an unstructured hat is usually the issue that people come into where they get some wrinkles in here because you're not able to stretch that material by hand well enough. Uh, so with the pressure still on, I'm actually going to take my other hand, reach over the top and just set it right there on the frame. Okay. So where the latch is just now engaging, I still have the pressure down with my other hand and then I'm going to close the frame. Once you've actually closed the frame, you should be in a great position to just let this go, pull that T-bar outside of your hat, and now none of that material has come back at you. We have a nice, perfect, flat sewing registration. Okay. So with we've, we've obviously had some practice using the Gen 2, and I, I will say that when you get it, you have to practice a little bit because it's, it's a new piece of equipment to you. But I will say that the trainability on it, it, it's just so, so easy and it's so systematic that, you know, we, we look from, as, a, as business owners, we look from, we look at things from this standpoint as how easy is it to show our team and how easy is it to teach to them. And this is just very easy to mm -hmm. teach to your new team members, which makes training um, a lot easier. So. Clayton. It's consistent as well, right? So you know you're going to get the exact same turnout every single time. Yeah, for sure. Will you reframe this hat yep. just in your normal speed yep. um, and just Absolutely. kind of show that process? I think Justin actually changed out our batteries, uh, so we should be able to turn our laser alignment tool on as well. Perfect. So now we'll be able to see exactly where our seam is falling on our hat. So inserts the T-bar, applies some pressure. He's got the laser alignment tool on, so he can see that that's going straight down that center seam. Mm -hmm. So he knows he's centered. And then pulls the band over. And then he's done. We'll actually take this, and I'm going to put this on our Tajima, and we'll just leave it here for now uh, so that we can move on and do another hat. Awesome. Did you get a click? I don't think it's not done right now. There we yeah, go. Yeah, we always just listen for that click. So definitely a lot easier to use. Uh, we find that with the cat frames that come with the machine, there's just kind of a lot of guesswork when you're framing up those hats and just kind of hoping that you get it on there well. And with this, it's just, it's like Clayton said, you get the same result every time. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to leave my laser alignment tool on for now, just so we can continue to use it the same way we've been using it. Uh, and I'm going to move on to a structured hat. Uh, so there's a lot of different kinds of structured hats. They come in a little higher cap, like a flex fit, mm -hmm. but it's not nearly as structured as something like your Richardson's that are very firm inside of that in the structure. Uh, and then flat bills are making a comeback as well. So we're going to go ahead and show you all these different kinds of hats that we like to do and that customers generally ask for. Uh, so again, we're going to take our backing, slide it underneath the tabs, and on one side, and then on the other, we're going to push through those little notches. 
So we grab the material of the hat again. And then from here, the process stays the same. So I'm going to take my sweatband, pull it out. Do you need to adjust your... Well, that's, I'm, I'm going to show you if we weren't to adjust it first. Okay. So then we're going to put it on the frame. And if I go to stretch this with where I had my T-bar, for the unstructured hats, you're going to see that we still have quite a bit of flagging and bubbles in here. That's all a, a recipe for not only breaking needles, which is uh, difficult in itself and can, can be a real pain, but you'll lose a lot of sewing registration and your designs won't turn out how they're supposed to. So I'm actually going to take the frame off. And then I'm going to adjust this the same way we did the other one, except for I'm going to push this in. And I'm going to start with it in as far as it'll go. And we'll go from there. Uh, the rule on our framing gauge is the more structure a hat has, the further in you go. The less structure, uh, something like those unstructured hats, or uh, we'll show what we'll show you later is a floppy beanie or bucket hat, excuse me. Uh, then we're going to pull this gauge out. So with it all the way in, we've got our backing in place. We're going to slide the hat in, just how we showed you before, with your sweatband pulled out and then start stretching our material. Now, when I stretch this, you see we're not stretching it from up here, we're actually pulling this material from in here. So I can pull out and alleviate the majority of that flagging, if not all of it. And then all I have to do now is pull my cap frame over with the pressure still down and latch it down. If you're having difficulty like this, what I normally tell people to do is take your hand, push down right here, and it'll close a lot easier for you. Yeah, and let me, let me show my girl way. Um, I usually will take, so I'm applying pressure with my right hand and I take my thumb and I press down here and then, and then I can use my whole hand basically to close. Uh, a lot of people will try to kind of do it this way and it's not, it's, it's more difficult. So I like to use my hand and close it like that. It's a lot easier. Perfect. Give you a camera back. Do we have that little tool? Yeah, it's sitting right here. That's Great. actually what I was just going to show. So uh, another thing that we've developed, uh, actually that Joe developed to make this easier on people with, if you have a difficult hat like this and maybe you have arthritic hands or you have other problems that might cause issues with doing this, we actually have a tool that we slide in like this. Other way. Slide in like this. Here, you do it. <laughs> there you go. Yep. And then just lift up. So that was like, crazy easy you can clayton hasn't been to a trade show in a while so yeah. he forgot how to do it plus i i don't normally use these so if if you he have has strong man hands yeah if you have a problem this is a very easy tool um that we will actually let's do that one more time include with our gen twos just to show you how to make order and I mean, you can see that I just, I didn't have any kind of struggle at all. I just slid that on there and it just gives you extra leverage and then you close. So this is a highly recommend tool if you're going to buy the Gen 2. And I, I will say that um, we could throw, we could throw this in with the first five Gen 2 purchases today. So if y'all use the discount code. Uh, our first five Gen 2s will receive one of these. So with our hat framed up here, we've already put our unstructured hat on our Tajima. We're going to take this and actually put it on the Melka machine. Cool. So uh, the same way we did the Tajima, we're actually going to turn the hat to the side. Turn the hat to the side so we go in there nice and easy. And we may actually have to put the frame forward. Right? And then we snap it into place. You know, quite center. There we go. Stamped on the drive. Got the click. So we have an EMT 16. Our cat frames work really great on here as well. So um, I've got my third frame set on the on the gauge already. So what we're going to do now is go into. Uh, I probably do the flat bill next uh, because the the positioning of the gauge is going to be very similar. And then I'll go into the Richardson hat after that, because we may actually have to do something unique with the Richardson. Um, and I'll show you kind of how to problem solve this. So with our uh, framing gauge in the same place where we did the flex fit hat, I'm going to take the flat belt hat. Now you see, we've already sewn this hat out uh, multiple different times just to try and do some practice on these hats for other customers. Uh, so we're very familiar with how these hats work. 
and the flat bill will actually go right back to the way it was. So there's no concern in bending your bill or breaking it, which a lot of people that wear these hats and purchase these hats do not want. Uh, so this hat comes apart. So again, you have these two pockets here that I'm going to put my finger in and make sure that I can get my T-bar nice and snug in there so that when I go to stretch this material, I can actually pull out. Look how perfect that laid down. So it pulls out every bit of the flagging and you'll have no bubbles in your hat. So you'll break a ton less needles and your sewing registration should be phenomenal every single time. So with our hat on here, we're actually going to take our frame and this is flexible. So I can kind of move this around a little bit. You don't want to be too rough on it, right? But we can actually move this so that it will fall directly where it needs to push that bill forward just a little bit so that we can actually get this whole sewing area. And then we're ready to go. It's as easy as that. It's awesome. So we take that off and put that right on our machine, wherever you wanted to go. And yeah. You have a full sew field to use. Um, we would click this onto the PR driver because that's one that we have left. But we're actually going to show you guys a visor on there in a little bit. Uh, the flat build caps can be really tricky to do on the PR machine. And we're, we're just... We like to tell you guys about the limitations sometimes that make this this particular machine uh, a little trickier of a machine to do hats on sometimes. And it's just because of all this back here. When your hat's moving and the bill hits that, it just makes it really, really difficult. So a flat build cap is is not one that we would necessarily recommend. If, if you're looking to do flat bills on a on a PR or baby lock, we wouldn't necessarily recommend <clears throat> buying the Gen 2 because we, we don't want you to not get a good result. Um, and it's it's not the Gen 2. It's just that flat bills are going to be really difficult on a PR in general. Yeah, just because the, the bill of your hat's so large, it's going to hit the back of that it's machine. It's so stiff. Standing up so tall. Yeah. Um, last hat that we're going to do in the structured family is Richardson. I, I think the majority of you are probably familiar with these hats. Uh, if not have nightmares of them sometimes. Uh, Richardson hats are beautiful hats. They're wonderful hats when you get them sewn out. Uh, the difficulty is actually being able to get them laying properly so that you can sew them out. Uh, so even with our gauge pushed all the way in, like we did with the rest of the structured hats, we're going to see kind of how this lays out. Uh, sometimes, depending on the hat, it'll lay out just fine. But there's other times where you do this, you need to pull the actual plate off the top of our framing station. So we'll see kind of how this lays down. So even with putting some pressure on it, I don't know if you guys can see that, there's still a lot of bubbles in here that I'm getting. So what we're actually going to do this is an easy problem solve, is this plate will remove all the way. So this, this piece that we have that's moving right here, you can actually unscrew this lever all the way. This orange piece will come off in your hand, right? And then you can remove the top plate. So it's actually going to shorten this by about a quarter of an inch. But that quarter of an inch, when you're talking about the stiffness of a hat and being able to lay down the material, makes a big difference in how this material lays out. So again, we're going to pull out the sweatband in one side and on the other. With our laser alignment tool, I can tell that I'm dead center. Uh, if you weren't to have that, we have a little notch back here that'll show you where your center point is. So it makes it very easy as well. But now I go to stretch my material. And right away, you can see huh, all that area that had that flagging and those bubbles, it's all gone now. So I can actually recenter my hat, stretch that material down perfectly. It's laying out just perfect for how we want it. And then I'm going to close down my frame. So then I can release the material and go right on my machine. And now I know that there's not going to be any room between the arm of my machine and my needle. It's awesome. It should make your Richardson's very, very easy. Um, last one we're going to do, right? Until we, uh, until we start sewing out this visor is the visor itself. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to, uh, put the plate back on, which again, is just very easy. All right. Uh, for your visors, it, it doesn't really matter how far in or out the plate's going to go uh, because we have a very unique way of sewing these visors out. So with every other hat, whether it was structured or unstructured, we went in this way, right? With your bill toward the frame. With your visors, we have a unique ability, move the tag, a unique ability because there's no top on these hats to not go this way. Because if you do that, you're going to lose uh, a quarter inch to even sometimes a little more of your sew field. So we actually take the hat and flip it around backwards. We're going to go up to the notches 
don't go over it, okay? Because then you'll end up with some gaps in there that'll, that'll cause some issues. Uh, take your thumb. Instead of using the T-bar, we're just going to push down on this material and go back to the plate, okay? So that will actually back. make sure that this hat is laying flat against that surface. And then once you're in a good position and you like where you're sitting, just bring your frame over, latch it down. So at this point, we can actually take this hat, go directly on our PR machine. I know. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Here, I'll take the phone. So one thing that we give you guys with the Gen 2, if you have a baby lock or a PR machine, is something called an override bracket. It looks like this. <clears throat> so what this does is this little sensor right here. Can you see it? So it pushes that down. Now, right now, my machine is in hat mode. But when I put this on, it switches it over to hoop mode. And what this does is it tricks the machine into thinking that we're sewing on a medium-sized hoop. And what that does is it allows you to get a slightly larger sew field, which is a good thing on this machine because you can be a little limited with it. All right. So once you have your visor hooped up and you're moving it over to the machine. This is Justin. Hi. You'll see me in a little bit with the back of caps as well. He's, a, he's really good on the PR machine. So we have him showing you guys. So as you can see on our machine, Right now, it says that it's going to move. So once you apply that override bracket and it switches from cap mode over to on hoop mode, it's going to move your driver to a position that it would be on your medium or largest hoop. It really kind of just depends how big your design is um, and where you have your override bracket bent down at. So once you do that, you'll go ahead, clicks on really easy there. And then as you can see right here, it's lined up straight down the middle of the visor. If it doesn't automatically do that um, and center in the middle, you may need to adjust your override bracket. So you just take the override bracket and a pair of pliers and you can just bend it down slightly and it will. This piece, the part of it that pushes the sensor down is what you'll bend. So that's what will tell your machine that you're sewing on that larger hoop. Um, so once you have that on there, you always want to make sure to, I'm going to move it back. You want to make sure to do your trace. This is going to protect both the cap frame and your machine. You don't want your cap to end up running into the needle bars or especially with the PR, you don't want it to run into the back of the machine because what you'll find happen is if it hits the back of the machine, which we've already talked about flat bills, if it hits the back of the machine, what it ends up doing is it lifts the cap frame up off of the driver. It bends the rollers. So whenever um, whenever you're embroidering, the cap could potentially come off because it's running into the back of the machine. So you always wanna make sure to do your trace. That's kind of your good gauge of whether your design's gonna sew out good or not. If you see it even bend up a little bit, you're probably too close to the bell. So you just need to move your design up just a little bit more with the PR machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my trace again, just to make sure everything sews out good. As you can see, that's a nice large design to go on a visor and you're getting pretty much right here on the seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and what you do is you go over to your machine, you go to sewing, and then I'm going to change to six and then you'll hit lock and you're good to go. Okay. Got some questions answered. Okay. 
number and it's doing that. Technical difficulties. Do you want to do some frequently asked questions? Or yeah, we've got a couple questions, questions to, to answer. Okay. Let's, uh, let's take those. All right. Here we go. Oh. Hi, guys. I'm going to answer a couple questions while this shows out. Um, we just rethreaded this machine, so we're having a <laughs> little technical difficulties, but they're going to get that figured out, and I'm going to answer some questions with you guys. All right. I'm going to come up front so it's a little quieter. I hope you guys are enjoying this. We're having fun teaching. And we also would love to know more of what you guys want to see from us. Um, we're happy to do as many videos as we need to. So I'm going to hop in on the chat and look at some of our questions. The promo code for today is hoopless10. That'll get you 10% off on the website on anything you purchase. Uh, and that is going to be good until midnight tomorrow night. So this is a two day event. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Rich. Patricia, thanks so much for attending. Belle and Patricia from Tennessee. We love Tennessee. Jerry from Iowa. Adam says, as a disabled veteran with hand motor skill issues, the Gen 2 hat frame and mounting jig makes it so much easier than using the one that came with the Brother PR-1050X. Oh, we love hearing that. Yeah, thanks, Adam. We definitely agree. The ones that come with the machine are just so tricky to use. Good morning, Carly from Florida. How close can you get to the frame? That's a question by Adam. Adam, 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 Adam Small. How close can you get to the frame? I'm only able, able to get about 0.5 to 0.75 inches off the bill of the hat. Any lower in my hat bill hits the back of the machine brother pr 1050x oh, yeah, yeah. so this is actually what we touched on with the flat build hats and that just that big piece of plastic does make it really tricky to to get close to the bill and so unfortunately there's not really a great solution for that it's just kind of a limitation of the machine um we can't allow you to sew a little taller on the hat though so you can still get larger designs mm -hmm. uh just getting closer to the bill is going to be like like amy had said already a limitation of those pr machines um there are some ways that you can kind of break the bill and push it forward a little more to to get you a little bit closer but you're not going to get much closer than you know about 0.4 inches you know you're, you're about a half inch right now you can get a little bit closer than that but not by much yeah we sew out a lot of our hats where we're getting closer to the bill like that on our Tajima and Melco machines. Uh, those, those machines really do yeah. hats very well, but th so do PRs. You're just limited with how close you can get to the bill. So, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, ask away, we've got a couple minutes and we'd love to, to answer those for you. Adam, yeah, that, Adam, thank you for the suggestion. That's, that's exactly what they're doing right now. I think that they, uh, they had the they put the new bobbin in and rethreaded and I think the bobbin was actually coming over the top uh, rather than going inside which it needed to so they're fixing it right now. All right, I've got a couple questions about bucket hats and sides of hats. So the bucket hats can actually be done on the Gen Two. Clayton is actually going to frame that up in just a couple of minutes. Yeah. And then the back and sides of hats, we have a back of cap frame that does the back and sides, mm -hmm. and it is awesome. Justin it, will be showing that a little bit later, right? Yep. Um, after a Madeira segment, Justin's going to demo the back of cat frame. Um, it is a fan favorite around here. It's d definitely one of our top sellers. People absolutely love it because it is so, so easy to use. You People do beanies on there and Christmas stockings, and it, it's versatile. You can you can do a lot of different stuff with it. So I think Justin's going to show you a few of those different things as well. Yeah, for sure. So we are doing the back of cat frame today in just a little bit. Yeah, Adam, <laughs> it, it always makes you feel better to hear that it's not you. It's definitely not you. It's just just a limitation. Um, let's see, Wanda from South Carolina. 
thank you so much for coming on today. We really appreciate your guys' time. Can I watch this live video again from John? Will this be posted? Yeah. Okay. So this will be posted later. So you guys can rewatch if you need to. Uh, the back of cap is available for happy. All of our stuff is available for happy. The side um, of cap hoop, the back of cap hoop side of cap is $289.95 for the small. And then we have a larger size that works on some machines for $309.95. So, um, yeah. If you guys have any more questions, we're going to wrap up in the next 30 seconds to a minute. And then we're going to head back to the back, check out our progress on the visor and frame up a bucket hat for you guys. Yeah. One question that we get really frequently, um, okay. Yeah, one question that we get really frequently is, um, do you need the T-bar framing gauge with the Gen 2? And as Clayton mentioned when he first started framing up, it's like, it, it, it's very imperative to being able to use the Gen 2 well and as intended and to receive all the benefits from using it you do need the t-bar framing gauge as well so we always um recommend that you purchase those together because we feel strongly that you just will not um, have the same advantages if you don't have it so yeah so uh clayton is going to frame up a bucket hat on the gen 2 and then uh, he's going to show you a different way to do bucket hats if you don't have the Gen 2. So let me flip the camera again. So uh, we're going to work off the Gen 2 the same as we've been doing with all the other hats. Uh, this is going to work perfectly for a hat that is very, a bucket hat that is very floppy. It doesn't have any structure in the brim of the cap is the, is the main thing you're looking for here, okay? Um, it, I'll show you a couple different ways that we do this. The, the best way and the best practice is to use our taller piece of backing. And I'll show you, I'll show you why I do that. Okay. So we've got, we've been using this shorter piece, uh, which is 3.75 by 11. Uh, we have a four and a half mm -hmm. by 11 as well. Um, that is what, what I suggest to use when you're doing these bucket hats. And I'll show you why right now. So we'll use the shorter piece just to give you a, uh, a baseline. So uh, we've got our backing on there the same way. Even if I pull, and the rule on this, like I said earlier, more structure the further in, the less structure the further out you pull this. Bucket hats are floppy with no structure, so we're going to pull this thing all the way out. But as you can see already, my backing doesn't meet how tall our frame is. So when I go to frame this hat, it may look good while you're on the gauge, right? Well, nice and flat. It's perfect, right? But as soon as I take this hat off, Really, the only thing holding it up, because it is so floppy, is my backing. So I lose a good piece of that sew field. Mm -hmm. So we'll actually use our taller backing, the 4.5 by 11, because that allows us to not only stand that material up while we're on the gauge, but once we take it off of here and we're ready to sew, it'll keep it nice and high as well. So everything else in the process stays the same. we got our backing pulled out, or our, sorry, our sweatband pulled out. We're going to go inside on both sides, and then I'm going to take my fingers to spread the material at the bottom to insert the T-bar, so just like this, okay? At this point, I like to just make sure that everything is kind of falling where it's supposed to. The seam of the cap is falling right at the end of the uh, framing gauge, mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to start down the material. These hats are so floppy that it, what you end up running into if you try to do this on your normal cap frame is just too many wrinkles. So we're actually able to get all that material laid out perfectly. Then you're going to pull this over the top. A best practice for this, things that I see people do when they're first starting out, is that they'll try to close this frame with all this material in the way, like this right here. So just make sure that you folded your material out of the way while I'm still applying pressure with the T-bar so that when we close this, it'll fall exactly where it needs to. And none of that material will come back at you now when you attempt to go sew. Bam. Bucket hats go from being one of the most difficult hats to do to being really one of the easiest hats that we do on these frames. So easy. Um, we have another frame. So we've got our Gen 2 frame, which we've shown you on the majority of these hats. It's going to work all the way from an unstructured hat uh, to visors and your bucket hats, okay? And all the way through all your structured hats as well. Uh, if you have one that has a structured bill on your bucket hat, I'll show you what that looks like.
Uh, this one isn't overly structured. Uh, you can actually get a little bend in this hat, which you may also be able to get this into the Gen 2. And I've shown people at trade shows how to do that. Uh, it will still fight you a little bit in the Gen 2, so it's a difficult hat. Uh, but the easiest way to do this is with our two-piece bucket frame. So this is uh, this cap frame is actually intended solely for these bucket hats with structure in the bill. Uh, so we're going to take our taller piece of backing again. We also have clips in this frame to make this easier for you to hold your backing in place so you're not fighting it as much. Okay. Once we've got it there, same process applies. We're going to pull out the sweatband, set it on the frame. We're just going to make sure that we're falling exactly where we need to, right? So this looks pretty good. This piece has a little lever here, and you'll see that this lever, as I turn it, is going to tighten and loosen this piece. So as you pull it towards yourself, it's going to open it up. This piece is what you insert first. It's got a little hook here. It goes on the inside of the cap right there, okay? So it just latches right there on the frame. Then once you're in a good spot, we've got this opened up, right? You're just going to close this down to where it tightens your material, okay? And then pull this forward. Then once you've done that, you can let your lever go. The material won't come back at you, and you're ready to sew. So this is a very, like, specific use cap frame. This was designed for bucket hats. It's all we sell it for. If you're getting a lot of orders of those floppier bucket hats that Clayton just did on the Gen 2, you are you don't need this cap frame. The Gen 2 will do it really, really easily. Um, if you're getting a lot of orders for thicker, um, brimmed, just trickier bucket hats, the two-piece bucket hat would be a really great investment for you. One's like this, right, where it's got cardboard in the brim of your hat. Yeah. If you were to bend this or roll it to try to get it into the Gen 2, it's not going to go back to its form. True. Uh, so this is a perfect example of a hat that you would want to use on the two-piece bucket frame. And uh, Justin or Katie, if you could put in the comments the price on the bucket cap, on the bucket frame, that would be really great. Um the Gen 2 is $349.95. The T-bar framing gauge is $399.95. And for today and tomorrow, we're doing 10% off. I mentioned before, our discount code for the website is hoopless10. So, and the first five people that purchase the Gen 2 will get that uh, little tool that helps you close the frame easier. So we're actually done with our visor. Got our visor done here. And you can see that we got decently close to the brim here. We actually can get closer and I'll show you guys. Those examples. Yeah. Uh, this hat's a little old. It's one of our trade show hats, but we're so, almost in the seam of the cap. There. Yeah. So we're like right on the line there. Um, you definitely can get close. Uh, and then you have examples of taller designs that we can do with these Gen 2s. Yeah, this is like three and a half inches and it's, it's huge. We did this on a Tajima on the Gen 2. And it's not just a one-off thing, right? We've got another very tall design. Yeah. doesn't matter the kind of hat that you're using, whether it's structured or unstructured, large designs. Um, I, I know that we're getting close to running out of time. So if you guys have any specific questions or if you want us to demo anything specific that has to do with the Gen 2 right now, uh, put it in the comments and we'll definitely make sure to show you whatever you want to see before we switch over to Nancy with Madeira. And thank you for everyone for joining today. Uh, Amy and uh, Justin are used to doing these Facebook Lives. This is my first time, so be easy on me. Let me see what we got here. Adam says the back of cat frame rocks. You guys will see that in a little bit with Justin. It does rock. But thank you, Adam, for saying that. That's really sweet. We really appreciate all the positive comments. Okay. Is she ready? All right. So one frame, Jackie Ewald. So one frame can do how many different styles? Oh, the Gen 2 cap frame can do. We've got, uh, just sitting in here right now, you can kind of see our shelving units behind here. They are full of different kinds of hats that we do on the Gen 2. 
uh, whether the Port Authority or Richardson's, FlexFits, 5950, 3950, or 3930, excuse me, uh, Visors, it, it really does not matter. The only thing that changes, and it's why this framing gauge is so great, is the gauge itself. So we just adjust it for each style of hat, and it allows you to do every one of those hats and turn out the exact same way every single time. Cashmere Embroidery says, does this work with the Brother 1050X embroidery machine? It absolutely does. Um, Rich asks, which machine option should I choose for a Rakoma? You should re you should choose the option that has Tajima in there. It's it's just like a Tajima cap driver. Um, Rich also asks, so the Gen 2 clamps on the sides of the sewing field, no binder clips ever needed. And no, no, no. binder clips ever needed. You, you don't need an extra set of hands. You don't need bad clips or binder clips or any of that kind the of stuff. The clips are all built in. So uh, Carly says, love this, learning a lot. Thank you so much for hopping in on this today. We really appreciate your time. We're happy to do it. Kitty Buck Walter, thank you for this video today. Very informative. Gen 2 is on my list. Get yourself a Christmas present, Kitty. 10% <laughs> off. All right, guys, we're going to switch gears over to Nancy with Madeira. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm doing very well. I've been watching you guys. You're doing a great job. I actually learned a little bit myself. So thank you so much. Um, what are you going to be teaching us today? Um, so today we're going to do 3D foam. I have an example here that I did some testing with on one of my era caps. So um, never throw your caps away because you can use those for um, testing later on down the road. That's good um, so advice. That's, yeah. Um, so you can see it has a nice raised edge there. Can you see that? Yeah, that looks awesome. <laughs> I used two pieces of foam on that one, and I only use one piece of foam on that one. That is awesome. So you uh, can kind of see what happens with that. Well, we're we're excited to watch. We're gonna switch gears over to you for a while. So we'll uh we'll interject if we have any questions to read off to you. But thank you so much. Thanks, Nancy. Sounds sounds great. Thank you. I have Morgan behind the camera here. She'll be helping out as well. Um so let's get started. Um so 3D foam is a really great way to um enhance the embroidered design. You see it on a lot of caps that are out there for sure. And this is exactly how it is done. It's done with the foam that's underneath and the stitching that's done on the top. <clears throat> and probably one of the common questions that's gonna come right off the bat is <clears throat> excuse me, um, do you have to do specialized digitizing for this? And you absolutely do have to do it. And it's not really that hard to do because um, basically you don't want to squish the foam. So you don't want to flatten it. So you wouldn't be using a fill stitch because that would flatten it for sure. But you're using the satin stitches. And then there's a couple of other elements in it that are necessary as well. And I'll cover those. So we're going to do the H today. Um, before we do get to that, just going to show you. These are just examples of some of the colors that we have. Um, these five colors are the most popular colors. We sell this as a package that you can buy if you're interested in that. That's the item number is 12-18-5 because you get the five colors. Um, and if you think about the threads that you use, <coughs> excuse me, black and white are your common, you got your yellow, your blue, and your red. And you do kind of want to match it up to the thread that you're using. Today I want to use the dark blue or navy blue because I'm using the navy blue thread. <coughs> so that being said, I do have a couple of other 3D foams here. That's a tribal heart that was digitized by Eric Campbell for us. Done with the multicolored thread and yeah, the poly. Can, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Get an up close so they can see how raised it is. Now, is that one piece or two pieces? This is a single piece. And this is just one, you know, your local logos that are out there. This is a made up logo. Mm -hmm. And again, the top one has a single layer. The bottom one has two layers of uh, backing. It kind of shows. So when you talk about the digitizing, we have this tutorial that's online. And I'm going to go over it just to let you know what the basics are behind it. So you want to use your wide satin stitches. You also want to pretty much double up on the density with those satin stitches because you're trying to cover the foam. 
and you do not want to do any fills. You want to tap down the foam and you'll see that um, once I put that on there and it kind of holds it in place. I'm going to use a spray adhesive to kind of hold it in place. That's made for embroidery. That's important as well. Um, and then the other thing that's really kind of important is, you know, if you think about these letters, actually, I'm going to get the other one because it's a little bigger and easier to see. If you think about the edges of these, if you just did satin stitches here, you'd have foam sticking out. Right. So there are caps that hold the um, foam down. But also when you see you have satin stitches going this way and you have satin stitches going that way, you could also get the gap in between there. So the digitizing is done in such a way. There's very little um, underlay when it comes to 3D foam because, again, you don't want to compress the foam. So there are these things that are called caps and planks. So a cap, if you think about the edge of that letter H, basically a zigzag underlay. You want it nice and straight on the edge, and you can, and you also want to alternate it or kind of um, don't do an exact edge on the inside because that could actually perforate the foam on the inside. That makes sense. So in between your letters or the adjacent satin stitches, now what you need is what's called the plank. So this one you can see is random uh, zigzags underneath, and what that does is that fills in that spot so that when you look at this H. There's no gap. I'm going right to get real close here. So the gap that's right here, you're trying to make sure that hmm. it doesn't separate. So the planks will do that. So those are the basics behind digitizing for 3D foam. If you want to learn more, because not every letter is a nice neat H, you could have designs in your letters. Um, there's a webinar that's online that we did a few years back with Eric Campbell. And he goes into detail when it comes to the digitizing for the 3D foam and just all the different things that are necessary to create a really nice design. So I highly recommend that you go to that guy. So I also have here the spray adhesives. We always we have two, and I always like to explain the difference between them. Uh, the 1000 has a real high tack to it, so I'm going to use that with the foam to try and hold it in place. The 1100 has more of a medium tack. It also has a really nice lemon scent to it. Um, so it's not as um, smelly, I guess, as the other one, or it has a nicer smell. So I would use this with t-shirts and, you know, lightweight um, performance wear if I wanted to adhere the backing to the back of the shirt. And that's what I'm going to use that for. Sometimes when you embroider on 3D foam, as much as you want to match the color to the top thread, Sometimes, you know, maybe you only have the white or the black. Um, a gray is a really good color to have as well. But if you think about your threads, anything that's like a light color like that, you could use your white. If it's a dark color like the navy, you could use your black. But sometimes that thread, the foam, I should say, will poke out outside of the letters. And that's easily fixed with either a heat gun and you just heat it up and those little things will kind of sink right into the letters or you can use a steamer that will do it as well um i, I also have the steamer out because i'm going to steam the cap before i cook it steaming the hat that i have it has the buckram on the inside is going to soften it up so that when i take it over to the hoop it's going to lay nice and flat like um Justin was showing us how you don't want that flagging. You don't want it to bump up and down. Um, we want to get it as close to the backing and to this as possible. So that is pretty much it as far as what I have to share with you. If there's any questions, i be happy to answer those. Otherwise, we'll move on to showing the hooping. Yeah, let's get right to it. All right. Um, so I'm going to go steam the hat first. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And I just have a simple household steamer here. And it heats up really quick. That's one of the things I like about it. And I'm going to steam the top of the hat. I'm going to steam the side. And that's going to make it nice and pliable. Really well. Okay. So.
I'm going to take a look at these other colors that we have here um, in the 3D foam. The gray, you said that would be a nice color to have, but there are so many, and I feel like you could match all of our threads right to them. You pretty much can, yeah. I mean, there's browns, there's tans, there's a couple of different greens. Okay. Right, my steam's coming out here, so I'm going to start using that. So I basically hold it right on. Um, you want to make sure it's clean. I'm using a white cap, so I don't want to be putting any lint from something else on there. I've got a little booster here. Get a little more heat <laughs> in there. And then I'm also going to do the same thing on the other side. And this just puts a little moisture in there. It and it uh, heats it up and it makes it pliable. So that buckram can be a challenge when it comes to embroidering. Um, but the Gen Two Hooper. Um, with that lever that you pull it down with, it's a huge help. I've only had this hooper here for a couple of days, and the, um, it took nothing to learn how to use it. Uh, the videos are great. The demonstrations from today are great. Um, I've got about a four-inch wide backing here. It's a heavyweight, tearaway backing. So when you're hooping on hats, the material, the buckram, that's going to support the design really well. Um, you're not, you don't even really need backing for the design and the hat, but you do need the backing to hoop and embroider. So you want a nice heavyweight tearaway. And got my little flaps there. I'm going to. I know that Clayton and Amy did a handful of these this morning, but we'll do another demonstration. Um, so I love these little flips here. I think they're great. And of course, going to poke those through. And now that backing's not going anywhere. So my hat is now pretty soft. I'll pull that band out for sure. I'd like to let people know it's okay. You you definitely want to pull it out for sure, but I guarantee you'll forget it once in a while. <laughs> for sure. Um, and that happens. So um, those little pokes there, I don't have the level or the laser that you guys have, um, but I'm going to use those things that are sticking out here to line my hat up. I'll make sure it's lined there as well. Plate in here. Make sure that it's in there well. We are. Um, this was a nice high crowned hat, which gives you that nice area. Um, the letters that I'm putting, I just bought a font, um, alphabet font set on um, embroidery library to use, but they're very high. So using that nice high crown is going to give me the area that I need it for. So, that where it needs, that's where it needs to be. I'm pulling down nice and firm. And there we go. <laughs> I am weak. Um, so... I do find that a little hard, but I am a self-appointed weak person. Um, <laughs> we'll have to get one sure. of those lovers to help you. <laughs> um, so just lift it up, flip it up. Actually, I'm going to put that up back on one more time. I really want to check, just make sure there's not a lot up there. So I'm actually going to do that again. I'm feeling a little bit of um, play there. I'm going to make sure I'm pulling down. Firm enough. Put that underneath there. Line it up again. The other thing I'm not really all that good at is alignment when it comes, or placement, I should say, when it comes to. I don't do a lot of um, production embroidery. There we go. I like that better. Perfect. Right. It off. Oh. Shake that little guy out there. And there it is. Great. A nice flex fit hat um, that's ready to go to embroider. So um, there's actually a placement line on most designs when it comes to 3D embroidery. So that's really good to have. This particular um, alphabet does not have the placement line. Excuse me, but I know where it's going to be. So I'm going to put it in the machine. I'm going to get it lined up and ready to go.
Maybe. Maybe you should have practiced a little <laughs> more, but I'm almost there. Almost there. There we go. The click. We got the click. We got the click. That one's in. All right. It's in. Um, and now i got to line it up. So as um, I'm going to do my tracing here. Line it up. Always, always trace, especially with a cap. And I'm getting nice and close to the brim. That's the, one of the great um, attributes out of this Gen 2 is that you can get so close to that brim. Yeah. I don't want to get too, too close, um, but you can get closer than with your typical cap frames. So I'm going to raise her up just a little. Trace. I like that. So this is my kind of template here. I'm going to do the H. So you really need a piece that's just a little bit larger. You see my H is there. Give it enough height. Don't want it to go off the edge of the H. Don't forget to turn your designs upside down. Oh, we've made that mistake yes. before. Yes, we have. <laughs> we have to demonstrate that cap. We have to stand on our heads. All right, so I'm just using a box to maintain or contain, I should say, the spray adhesive. I, won't, I don't want it going all over the floor. I don't want it going on my machine. Just a light spray. You can kind of see it on yeah. there. Okay. If I wanted to use two pieces, I would cut another piece, lay it on top, and then I would spray it oh, again. Oh, nice and easy. Yeah. I'm going to do just one piece today, <clears throat> and the H is going to be over on this side. And this is a temporary spray adhesive that's made for embroidery, and it dissipates over time, or goes, pretty much goes away. Um, but it's enough to hold it in place while it places down the tap down. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. Um, and then we're going to mute it so that you guys won't hear the machine, but please send in your questions. I would love to answer them. Um, and hopefully this demonstration will be great. And I'm going to go ahead and press start if all is good. Here we go. Okay. All right. Um, thank you so much, Nancy and Morgan. This demonstration is so awesome. Foam is so cool. Um, so I like getting the opportunity to learn more about it. I've only used it a couple times, but it looks so pretty. Um, speaking of looking pretty, that thread wall in the back, that's really pretty too. Madeira always has the prettiest um, booth at the trade show. It's just very colorful and their threads are always so beautifully organized. I need, let's see, ours is right here. I need to get on that rainbow trend. It's very, it's very pretty. Anyway, um, Nancy gave me some frequently asked questions to read off to you guys while they're sewing out their design since the machine can be a little bit loud. So I'm going to read some of those off while we're waiting on that to sew out. So this question, can I use any type of foam to create a raised 3D embroidery effect? The answer to that is using a foam that is specifically made for embroidery will work best. Proper digitizing will ensure that the foam perforates as intended. Another frequently asked question, can I use any stitch file with satin stitches to create a raised 3D embroidery effect? And the answer to that is no. Typical designs have too much underlay. The underlay with satin stitches will flatten the foam and will not give you the desired effect. 
Designs must be digitized specifically to achieve the raised 3D effect. What density settings do I use for satin stitches? Approximately double the density, 17 millimeter and 0.25. Then she has in parentheses 1.7 to 2.5. Question, what are end caps in regards to digitizing for raised 3D embroidery? And the answer to that is end caps are the zigzag underlay stitches that run underneath the open ends of satin stitches. They provide a nice clean perforation and hold the foam in place. Another question. I hope I'm not going too fast. What are planks in regards to digitizing for raised 3D embroidery? Planks are zigzag underlay stitches underneath where the satin stitch columns meet. There's so much to it. <laughs> so interesting. How do I know where and when to place the foam down? The answer to that is typically an outline stitch is sewn out, letting you know where to place the foam. And the final question that she has here is, how is the foam held in place, especially on a round baseball cap? And the answer is you can use a temporary spray adhesive to hold the foam in place. And some embroiderers use tape. So there's a couple different options there. So let's see if y'all have any other questions in the comments. What spray glue did Nancy use? We need to use what spray glue Nancy used. Okay. There, Amita. Nancy, can you hear me? I can, Amy. We have a viewer asking, what spray glue did you use? That's my question. Um, so I use the Madeira MSA 1100. I'm sorry, this is the 1000. So the MSA 1000, item number 157-1000. Um, so this is that high tech. Um, spray adhesive and it's made for embroidery so as long as you give it a little bit of time your needles aren't going to come up and it'll hold whatever you need to hold together whether it's the foam on a cap or the backing maybe you need to sandwich backing together i prefer not spraying it on a garment um, but you can it's actually made that you can you just want to make sure you're doing it lightly um, so you don't get a lot of residue build up it will dissipate over time um, but that's what I used. Okay. That's really good info. I'm going to have Justin switch it back over to you so you can show them the result. Perfect. So I have, we did the letter H. I'm going to take it up and show you. I'm going to stay nice and close to you so I can okay. see everything you're doing here. So there you can see all that digitizing I talked about. Um, on the letter H, as it embroidered, we tried to show you up on the screen. It had the caps at the edges, and it had the planks in between the different angles of the satin stitch. So all that heavy density, the planking, and the caps created what you're seeing here. And this guy simply will pop. I love it. Right off. Turn it over, and there's your H. Awesome. I'll get a nice close-up so we can see. I love that even if there were some to be poking out, we have the heat gun if we need to, but the color of the thread matches it. So having those colors available is awesome. It is. And actually, if we added a little bit of heat to that, you might get a little more, like the edges will be a little more cleaner. Um, so that is the H on the hat. Check it off right in here.
really gracefully. And there's your tearaway backing. So just like the 3D foam, that tears right out. So you have nothing back there. You can see the, um, the tension is set right. So you, you're seeing the edges of the top thread and um, a lot of the bobbin thread shown, but that's okay for the 3D foam. Typical embroidery, if you're doing on flat, you wanna see a little less of the bobbin thread. For this, it's not. And the nice thing about these flex fit hats is that band, you can massage it a little bit and you can get it to go back where it needs to be. Um, so that looks pretty sharp with those those blue guys there. Awesome. I don't know, um, while we were gone, I didn't really hear what Amy was saying, but if she covered all your questions, I don't know. I'm scrolling through some questions right now. Um, we said the name of the spray adhesive that Nancy used was the MSA 1000. Um, and we have our easy 3D foam that we've been using. Um, I don't know if you want to um, cover backing it all, Nancy, the backing that we used inside the hat. Yeah, we do have, uh, we have a couple of different three ounces. I prefer the easy cap supreme. It's a three ounce backing. Um, you saw how nice and easy it um, tore out. But this guy puts uh, minimal stress on your designs as you're tearing it away. Uh, and that's one of its greatest benefits. But it's a three ounce backing. Um, so it's a heavyweight tear away. And that's what I use for that. I use that for all the caps. Um, well, perfect. And I think that uh, we saw Clayton and Amy using a, um, a pre-cut backing as well. Um, so in just a second here, we'll hand it back off to Amy. Did you have any questions for us, Amy? Um, I can't think of anything, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming on and teaching us something new. And thank you for sending us thread. It is so beautiful. We sewed out our visor with the bright pink because it was catching my eye. <laughs> And, um, I, yeah, I can't think of any other questions, but if there's any other questions that come through in the comments, I will email those to you guys. Perfect. Thank you so much for having us be a part of your seminar. And uh, you guys are doing a great job, and we can't wait to um, see all the comments. Well, thank you so much, and you guys have okay. a Merry Christmas. You thank too. You Bye. Too. Bye. All right. You guys, so Justin's going to hop on here in a couple minutes and do the back of cat frame with you, but I just want to answer some uh, remaining questions and some frequently asked questions that we get on the Gen 2. So a couple of things I wanted to touch on really fast. I just want to remind you guys the 10% off discount code for our website for today and tomorrow is hoopless10, H-O-O-P-L-E-S-S, -S, and then the number 10. So... Our, uh, our seminar today is called Hoopless Embroidery and with a 10 because it's 10% off. So um, Hoopless 10 is the discount code. I do want to recommend um, if you want to get it really timely to select ground. Um, we've been having a little bit of trouble with USPS. And I'm not sure. It's probably just because of the holidays and because of COVID. But those shipping times seem to have be um, a little more delayed than UPS ground. So if you're wanting it real timely, select UPS ground. Um, we've got a couple questions here. Can you hoop an unstructured hat on the Gen 2? You absolutely can. If you go back and rewatch this video, uh, my husband Clayton did that at the very beginning. And in my opinion, it's one of the easiest hats to hoop. I love doing unstructured hats. We hear a lot of people say that they hate doing unstructured hats or as they're called dad hats. But uh, on the Gen 2, they are a piece of cake. So there's that. And then uh, several questions about it working on the Brother PR. Um, absolutely, the Gen 2 works on the Brother PR and Baby Lock Machines, the 6 or the 10 needle. It actually also works on the Baby Lock Alliance, which is a single. I think I'm right about that. Um, and then the Brother Persona is a single needle. Um, and it also works on that. So really great option. If you want to do hats, you want to up your hat game, you want it to be a lot easier, a lot less of a headache, the Gen 2 is a really, really great option. Uh, again, the Gen 2 is $349.95 and the T-bar frame gauge is $399. We're doing 10% off today. So that's going to knock off about $75 bucks for you. So that's exciting. Um, 
A non-related Gen 2 question that we got from Adam Small. He asked the difference between the pink clamp, the persona clamp, and the slimline. So we're actually going to be going over clamps tomorrow, but I'm happy to answer this question because it's one that we get frequently. And we're trying to make our website as like, ex like explaining it well as we can, uh, but it can be a little difficult. So the slimline clamp works on the Brother PR machines, the Baby Lock machines, all the way up to Baird and Tajima, Rakoma, ZSK, SWF. I mean, the list goes on and on. It works on pretty much all industrial machines. Um, and if you have a machine specific question, go ahead and put it below or um, send us an email, sales at hooptechproducts.com or feel free to give us a call. Um, but so the difference is that the slimline, you buy the chassis, which is the base, it mounts onto your machine. And we have a bracket that goes on the back of that that's gonna work with your specific machine. Um, and then you pick the windows that you want to buy. So you can start with one. And if you want to add to your collection slowly over years, you can do that. The pink clamp that we have was we specifically made it for the Brother Persona, which is that single needle machine I mentioned. Um, but it also we have found that it works like really, really great on the Brother PR and the Baby Lock machines as well, as well as the Tajima Sai, which is a smaller machine. And so the pink clamp is a set. It comes with four windows. Those are listed on our website. Um, and so if you're just looking for more of like a package deal, that's a really great way to go. It's just a great set. It's a good deal. Uh, it's $599.95 and you get four windows. So uh, the slimline is more of an a la carte option. And then it works on those bigger industrial machines. The Persona clamp um does not work on the bigger industrial machines it is just the smaller the pr the baby lock the persona those machines so adam i hope that helps answer your question um let's see i'm gonna go through here and see if there's anything else i can answer for you guys before i switch it over to justin Thanks again to Madeira for coming on. It's so fun to learn new things. And I'm sure a lot of you do foam embroidery, but really nice to learn from people that know what they're doing. Uh, Dawn says the Gen 2 is a total game changer for doing hats. Highly recommend. Thank you so much. We really appreciate the great comments and great reviews. If you all have our products and you love them, it means a lot to us if you go to our Google business page and leave us Google reviews. Uh, Elizabeth Beavers, love all their products, makes stitching so easy. Thank you so much. I don't know if that's the same Liz Beavers from ZSK, but if it is, hi, thank you so much for attending. All right, guys, I'm not seeing any new questions, and I tried to go back through and see if there were any that I had missed. I think I got them all. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, switch you guys over to Justin so he can show you the back of cat frame, which is so awesome. Do you want me to film it? Yes. Okay. All right. Let me switch this camera around. All right, friend. All right. I know you guys met me earlier, but if you're just tuning in, my name is Justin Stewart. I am one of the customer service representatives at Hoop Tech Products. I love our company. Everyone here is just so amazing. And we do our best to provide the best customer service possible. So I just want to thank Amy and Clayton for all that they do. They're awesome. I know a lot of our customers love working with them and seeing them at the trade show. But since we haven't been able to do a trade show this year uh, due to COVID, I'm really glad we get to have this opportunity to demonstrate our products for you guys and you can see our faces outside of the Facebook Live. Um, so I wanna thank all of you for tuning in and thank Amy and Clayton for doing this because this is a really awesome opportunity. So today I'm gonna be talking about our backup caps. We have two sizes. This is our large and this is the compact size. As Amy said earlier, the compact is 289.95 and the large is $309.95. You have, um, just depending on the type of machine you have, 
will determine what size you can get. If you have a Tajima styled machine, you have both options for the the small and the large. But if you have Happy or Bearden or Mystagram, you only have the large size option. And then with the PR and Baby Lock, we have the compact edition that is available for that. I showed it on the Facebook Live that we did a couple weeks ago, but the reason that we only have the compact size for the PR and baby lock machine is actually if you clip this onto the driver because of how large it is, let's see if I can, you can see that there's a lot of interference between the top here, the back of here, and then running into the needles. Mm -hmm. So that's why we only recommend using the compact size for that. I was demonstrating putting this on. I didn't realize what back of cap I was using and I popped that on and it didn't fit. So it's a good, uh, good learning experience there, but that's why we recommend the compact size for the PR and baby lock machines. And that's why we have it available for the 10 needle. In terms of framing gauges, you may be asking, how do I hoop this up? We really recommend using it with our T-bar framing gauge, which as you saw earlier, you can also use with our Gen 2 cap frame. I know there are some customers that are like, I don't wanna you know, get the framing gauge, I can just hoop it on what I currently have. However, whenever you click our cap frames onto drive or framing gauges that aren't ours, there's interference with them. And plus you're not getting the full benefits of using the T-bar structure as well. And then there are some customers that try to hoop it up on the machine. But as you saw with the PR machine and with other machines, there's a lot of interference. So using our T-bar framing gauge is a really great option for hooping off the machine. That way you're able to see what's going on and you're able to get everything lined up the way that you want without having any interference with the machine or with the framing gauge pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move our T-bar framing gauge all the way in. I'm gonna take our pre-cut tearaway backing. Did you get the small or large? I got the small for the compact. Okay. So I'm going to slide it into the backing clips that we have on here. So little clips right here. And the difference between the small and large is just about a half That's, an inch in height. Half an inch in height. Um, and so with the compact, I typically use our 3.75 by 11. We also have the 4.5 by 11 option as well. Um, you'll definitely want to use that for the large back of cap, but you can, you can also slide that into the frame on here as well. So you can use that larger size. So I have quite a few different hats I'm going to be showing you, and then I'm gonna show you what else you can do with the back of cap. So as you can see with this hat, we've embroidered all the way around. That was done with our Gen 2. And then we have a design on either side of the hat there. And then we have this on the back of the hat. So this was done with the back of the hat and the sides were done with the back of hat as well. You have the option to use it with both. That is why this clamp is really great and it's versatile with any type of hat that you're doing or where you're wanting to do it on the back and the sides of the hats. The nice thing about this is all you have to do is this is an open hat. So I've undone it and then you just slide it in there. And on the back of cap, there's these three little notches. I don't know if you can see those very well, but there's these three notches and this is what's going to help you line up your design. So as you can see here, I have this middle tab here lined up with the center of the hat. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down and then I'll pull out my material to make sure it's nice and flat and it's not gonna bunch. And as you can see, it's nice and straight there. Turn on our laser light as well. So you can see it's straight with there. And then all you have to do is take it off and then you'll move it over to the driver okay. and click straight on there. Doesn't get easier than that. Super easy. The turnaround time from hooping it to putting on the machine, you can do that within seconds, within minutes. It makes it very easy to hoop the back and the side of hats, and it just makes the process of doing the back and sides of hats very easy, very fast. 
Um, and there, it is very easy to use, very easy to learn as well. So if you don't have the back of hat yet, or you do, and you haven't really learned how to use it, it's super easy to do and to learn. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop this off of the machine here. And then I'll move back over to our T-bar framing cage. Another option that we have for doing up hats, if you don't have our T-bar framing gauge already, is gonna be our pocket framing gauge. So our pocket framing gauge will also loosen it here. Will also fit on our framing station. And then as you can see, it goes directly onto the pocket gauge as well. So if you have our pocket clamps, you don't have our cap frames yet, and you want to use the back of cap, you can also use that with your pocket gauge. Mm -hmm. But we really recommend using the T-bar because maybe in the future you end up using the Gen 2 or you have the Gen 2 first and you want to add the T-bar to be able to do the back and side of hats. That's a great option as well. Either of these framing gauges are very easy to hoop hats on and hooping them with these versus hooping it on the machine or with the framing gauges with the machine is just super easy to do. And I, I would say a lot of our customers that buy our back of cap frames already have the Gen 2. So it's not really an issue. They already have the T-bar framing gauge. And so all they have to do to add to their collection is buy the back of caps. But if you haven't purchased, like, like Justin was saying, you haven't purchased any of our cap frames yet, but you want, um, a less expensive option. The pocket clamp framing gauge is $129 and the T-bar is $399. So if you don't think you're ever going to buy the Gen 2 and you're really just focused on back and sides of hats, that's a great option for you. But like Justin was saying, if you think that somewhere down the road you're going to buy the Gen 2 and you're going to make that investment, it's a really good idea to get the T-bar framing gauge. I wanted to show another trick as well. If you print off your design, beforehand and you put some tape on it because sometimes with the back of cap even though you have those notches that gets it lined up it may even though it's center here it may be crooked and not center um, vertically so if you print out your design and you put it on here where you would like your design to go and get it taped on here it's a little crooked there um, but if you print off your design and you get it lined up straight where you want it to go. And then you, I'm gonna use our large back of cap here. Four and a half by 11. So whenever I go to hoop it up and I have it straight where I want my design to go, I can put it in the frame And I know exactly where my design is going to be sewing out on. So I know where I can line up our design. And I know that whenever I have it hooped up and I move it over to the machine and I have it clamped down the way that I want it, that the design is not going to move. It's going to be exactly where I want it to go. So that's so that that is why printing off your design and putting it on the hat beforehand. That way you can kind of see where you want it to go is great. That way you can see. If you want to move it down lower on the hat or if you want to do your design higher on the hat, it just helps you gauge better where you want your design to go. Okay. We've got a couple questions on here. Maybe we can take a quick pause. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to have you look at all that. Okay. All right. Let's see. I'm looking at the questions here. Mm -hmm. Melinda Root says that she loves the back of, cap, back of cap clamp and it's a great uh, it's a game changer for work. Yes, the back of cap is a game changer. It makes hooping hats a lot easier versus what comes with your machine because you have the framing gauge portion and you have the back of cap and you don't have to try to mess with a bunch of clips. You just have this lever that you can use to 
clamp down on those. So the back of cap definitely is a game changer. Um, Cashmere Embroidery asks if you purchase the Gen 2 Extreme package, if you'll need anything else. The only other thing that you would need is your machine's cap driver. If you already have your, uh, your machine's cap driver, then you will be good to go. The Gen 2 Extreme package will come with everything you need to allow this to work with your machine, but you do need your machine's framing gauge. Do you sell the laser light that you're using on the framing station? Yes, we do sell the laser light. I believe it's $199.95, and that attaches directly to the T-bar framing gauge. It doesn't work with any other framing gauge, so you have to have the T-bar in order for that to work. Um, let's see. Mandy asks if we sell um, only the embroidery hoops. Yes, we do only sell our clamping systems and cap frames. Uh, we don't sell cap drivers or machines or anything like that. So again, if you have a PR machine and you don't have your machine's cap driver yet, you'll need to purchase that before purchasing our framing, our framing gauge and our cap frames because otherwise you're not gonna be able to use it with your machine. It looks like those are the questions that we have right now. So I'll give this back over to Amy. I'm gonna switch my camera back. Perfect. Okay, keep going, Jay. All right. So, as I said before, we have our large backing cap on here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slide our pre cut backing, four and a half by 11. Underneath these little clips. Underneath the backing clips that are there. That's another advantage to using our cap frames. We have the backing clips. You don't have to worry about trying to fit the backing into the hats in order to get it to stay in place. So, that's what's nice about the backing clips. So with the back of cap, you can also do the sides. This is a design that we've already sewed out with our back of cap clamp. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna line it up in the frame here. I'm gonna pull out, as you can see, it's a little loose in there. So all I have to do is tighten this down a little more. I'm getting it lined up straight in here. So as you can see, I have my material pulled out all the way. So it's going to be nice and flat. That's what allows you to get such a large sewing field on the side of the hats as well. And the nice thing about it is if you have customers that want your design to go maybe up closer to the front on the side of the hat here, it will clamp over towards the front of the hat so you can get designs pretty much right here from this seam all the way over. So the back of cap allows it to push the bill forward a little bit so that way you can get closer to the front of the hat. Not only is the back of cap great for the back and the side of hats, but with it being Christmas time, I know a lot of our customers use them for Christmas stockings. This is a Christmas stocking that we've already embroidered on. The way that you hoop this is I'm actually going to turn the stocking inside out. And then I'm going to slide it over in here. And you pull out your material and you're good to go. So this just shows off the versatility of using our back of cap clamp. It's not just great for the back and the side of hats. With it being Christmas time, it's a very popular time of the year for customizing your Christmas stockings, or as you can see, we did a little hoop tech Christmas stocking here. So it's really great for embroidering on Christmas stockings. And because the sew field of the large back of cap is so big, that's how you're able to get a larger design when you're embroidering on the stocking. And then this is another hat. As you can see, that's pretty close up to the front there. Um, so the back of cap allows you to get pretty much up close to the front of the hat right there. Will you hoop it like that so they can yeah. see? I'm actually going to switch over. So 
as you can see, this is a flat bill hat. So you have the bill that gives a little bit of interference with the frame. But since I want my design to be right here close to the, the edge of the hat, I have it lined up where I would like it to go. And then I clamp it down and you pull out your material to be nice and flat. And you're able to get very close up to the frame there. You probably pull it a little bit tighter. But as you can see, I'm getting right up into the front of the hat, uh, the front panel of the hat right here. And then another thing that our back of cap is great for is doing beanies. Mm. Or I know a lot of customers call them knit caps. So this is a great option. Um, it does not work on the Gen 2 cap frame. You'll want to get the back of cap for this. But all you have to do is slide it in here. And with the knit caps, because it's such a flexible material, you don't want to over tighten your material. Because if you do, then your design is going to end up Distorted. distorting and crunching up and everything. So I'm just going to pull it a little bit to make sure that there's no, as you can see, I'm not pulling very hard at all. I want to make sure my material is nice and flat, but I don't want to pull it to the point where it's going to be stretching the material out and then my design just doesn't sew out great. Easy peasy. So the back of cap is very easy to do whenever you're embroidering. I also did this Christmas hat as well. Oh, that's so cute. So it sewed out really well. We actually used our pre-cut um, tearaway backing and then I also used Solby over top when I was sewing. So that way it makes the design pop more and it doesn't get lost. You can kind of see in here, I sewed out a design, but because I didn't use Solby, it just got hidden inside of there. So use Solby whenever you're embroidering on this type of material. And we got but, that from Madeira. Yeah. And again, I just turn the hat inside out. And I get it lined up where I want it in the frame clamp it down pull out my material a little bit and then you're good to go you can just take that off the machine i'm gonna hop over to our milco machine over here and just as easy as the gen 2 cap frame was to click onto the cap driver so is the back of cap so it clicks on just like that very easy to use and then when you're done you can just pop it off of the machine and then you can remove your garment that you're embroidering on and then you can hoop up your next item. So that's that's really the versatility of using our back of cap clamps. Like I said, they're very easy to use. And just a little tip, because I know a lot of our customers ask this or have issues with this when they receive their back of cap, you don't want to over tighten this lever here. I know you want to get it really nice and tight. It does give a great hold, especially with the grips that we have on the inside of it, but you don't need to tighten it to the point where you basically can't do it anymore. What you end up doing is this brass piece that is in here, you end up stripping that and then it's not going to tighten down. So you want to make sure that you're not doing it super tight. When you start to get a little bit of pushback from the lever, that's when you want to stop tightening it down. Or if you notice that it's tight in the frame, you don't need to tighten it anymore that way as well. Okay, we have a we have two questions. Okay. Uh, Chris is asking, do you clamp in the Solvi also? So you can. For this Christmas hat that I did, I did not uh, clamp it in with it just because I was fighting with it a little bit. So actually what I did is I put it in the clamp and then I taped the Solvi to the frame to where it was outside of it. So I did that so that way it didn't uh, it didn't move and it I think you can kind of see at the end here it moved so the material is kind of interfering a little bit there but I put it on afterwards. It really kind of just depends on what's the easiest option for you but worked, what worked best for me was putting the Solvi on after. Okay. Um, uh, another question is sweat band. Do you pull the sweat band out? Yes. You definitely want to pull the sweat band out. Let's do that. That way you don't sew through it. 
Rich, you saw a dog in the background. This is Jessica. I will take a second to introduce you to Jessica. She is our beautiful mascot. And this is her brother, Woodford. He's on our Instagram a lot because he's very cooperative. So those are our office buddies. They get lots of love and attention here. All right, back to work. Back so to work. Do you want to pull out your sweatbands, the hats that I have over here? Um, when you were doing the back, there wasn't a sweatband back there. But this is actually a design that we sewed out on a mesh hat. We also used, um, so we used our backing and then we used Solvi so that way it sews over the top of the mesh. And as you can see, that design turned out really nice. It did me. turn out really turned great. Turned out really good. So what we did there was we pulled out the sweatband. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put back a cap on the framing gauge. The Solvi is a game changer. Definitely is a game changer. It's helped us with so many projects that we have here, especially when you get into material that um, like this that is very fuzzy mm. and it ends up bunching up and it just doesn't turn out well so the backing or the solvy definitely does make a difference so as you can see i've pulled out my sweatband here i'm gonna pull it around to the other side that sweatband's a little tricky but yeah i pulled the sweatband out of the way there and then I'm going to go ahead and clamp it down and I'm going to pull the material out here on the edge. Looks good. So as you can see, it's nice and flat. This has already been embroidered on, so there's a little play there. But once you have this hooped in the frame, you shouldn't have any interference. It's just going to be a nice and flat design on the back and the side of hats. We also have a side of cap option, which we will be displaying tomorrow that you can also use on the back and the side of hats that has a um, has a backing hold or a, a sweatband holder. So that way it holds the sweatband out of the way whenever you're embroidering on the side of caps. But that's what you would do when you're hooping up hats that have a sweatband. You would pull the sweatband out and then put it on the frame, tighten it down and pull your material out. Okay, uh, we have a question uh, from Lawana. Hey, Lawana. Can you show very quickly how you did that Christmas stocking again? Yeah. Okay. That would love to. And, and also, John wants to know what Salvi is. Do you have any lying around? Uh, is that Salvi? No. Justin might be able to find some Salvi. Um, for anybody who's hopped on recently, our discount code for our two day event is hoopless 10. It will expire at midnight tomorrow night. So we would love for y'all to take advantage of that. This, this is what Salvi looks like. This is Salvi. So what you do is you put your backing on the cap frame and then for what I did with this Christmas hat, I put it on there. Like I said, you can put the Solvi on there, but I was just having a really hard time, especially with how fluffy this material is. But you clamp it down, and then I just taped it over the frame on the sides so that way it didn't move. Mm. So once it sews, it's going to grip it. It's going to bring it nice and tight so that way your design sews out really well. So this is what, um, this is what Solvi is. So you can use that on this type of material. Or like I said, if you're doing mesh hats, you can put the Solvi over the top so that way it just sews out. It sews out really nice on the sides there. Solvi helps the thread stay on top. Yes. It's, it's a genius invention. And it helps give your design a little bit more of a pop yep. whenever you're embroidering as well. Uh, Christmas stocking. Christmas stocking. Christmas stocking. So Christmas stocking, the same way. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out like it would look. So that's what it looks like whenever it's just the regular stocking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it inside out. This way I don't end up 
sewing through to the rest of the Christmas stocking. So what I do is I'll slide it on here. Yeah, thanks, Nancy and Morgan. Yeah, when we say Salvi, we mean Easy Aqua Supreme. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, we messed that up. <laughs> <sighs> so what you do with the Christmas stocking is you'll open it up, you'll slide it into the frame here, you'll get it lined up, and then you'll clamp it down. Pull your material out to be nice and flat. And then you're good to take that off of the framing gauge. And then you can just take it over to the machine. And just like that, you're ready to go. You wanna make sure, especially with, uh, with Christmas stockings and things like that, you wanna make sure that the frame doesn't go over top and get caught in here because you'll end up just sewing through the stocking. So make sure when you put it on here, especially with how tight of a hole we have here, you wanna make sure that you have this part open and it goes over the needle arm so you don't sew through it. Okay, let me see if we have any other questions. DJ Dennis says, I purchased the large back and side clamp, works great. I believe Justin helped me. He was a great help when I couldn't find the hoop image on my Melco. Great job. Thanks, Dennis. Um, all right. I think we're pretty good here. I'm going to, um, wrap up for today. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you guys for watching the live today. We have so many great different products. And if you want to tune in tomorrow, we are going to be doing the, we're going to be doing another live. We'll be doing all of our flat clamps. So our clamping systems and our specialty clamps we'll be doing tomorrow as well with our engineer joe so make sure you tune in tomorrow as well but i'll turn it over to amy and she'll dismiss you guys all right guys i just want to make sure there's no other questions before we hop off here like justin said tomorrow we have another really full um couple hours with you we're excited to show you our other products we have really great clamping systems if you are so sick of hooping and you just want an easier better solution uh our clamping frames are our clamping systems are amazing uh, super easy to switch out the different window sizes. Um, we have them for all machine types, baby lock PR. We have them for Tajima, Melko Baird, NZSK, SWF, Happy, all kinds of machine. Rosemary, the discount code is hoopless10. And I believe if you scroll up in the comments, you'll be able to see it. Um, yep. Thank you, Mary. H-O-O-P-L-E-S-S-10. Oh, Melissa, I'm so glad you got the hat hoop for your birthday. Happy birthday. Um, yeah, so tomorrow, Joe, our engineer, he is so wonderful at explaining things um, in a very in-depth way. He's going to be showing you guys our specialty clamps. We have shoe clamps, glove clamps, strap clamps. Um, I know that some people have really specific businesses where they do like all dog collars or all horse bridles or that kind of thing. We have a really awesome strap clamp. Um, let's see if I can find one lying around it's this one here. It's orange and yellow. This right here. Um, those are really awesome. So we're going to be going over those. We're going to be going over our clamps. We're going to talk about pockets. We're going to talk about all sorts of stuff. So let me, um, because today we talked about the gen two, um, if any of you guys missed that earlier, we are going to repost this video so you can see it, but I'm just going to go over some frequently asked questions in case maybe there's questions you guys didn't think of that you will think of later. And yeah, we have a little bit more time. So I'm just going to go over some of these. Again, thank you so much for hopping on here with us today. We had so much fun doing these live demonstrations and answering all your questions. So for the Gen 2, there's a couple questions that we get a lot. One is, do I need the T-bar? I went over that earlier. Uh, we truly believe that the Gen 2 and the T-bar framing gauge is a system. It works together. You're going to get the best result if you do it together. We highly discourage buying the Gen 2 without it. We would honestly rather not take the sale than, than sell it without the T-bar framing gauge because we feel that strongly that you need both pieces to make it work. Um, the way that we intended for it to work. And 
the benefits are endless. It's it's a way easier frame up. It's better registration. You're going to have far less needle breaks. Um, you're able to do so many different kinds of hats. It's super easy to train new team members on. Uh, I, Nancy mentioned earlier, she just got our Gen 2 a couple days ago. And she, she did it like a pro. She was amazing at it. So you would think she's been using that all along. So very easy to train. Um, on top of that, if you guys want to learn more about our products or you're ordering products and you're like, I don't know how to use them once I get them, we have tons and tons and tons of YouTube videos. And if there is a video that you need that isn't on our YouTube channel, please email us. We'll make it. Um, we'll get it done really quickly so that you can have a clear picture of what you need to do to use your products. Um, should my top frame be level? There is a question that we get on occasion. So I'm going to show you guys. So some people will say like, they'll get their frame and they'll look at it. Hold on. Where's my camera? Okay. They'll look at it and they'll say, um, it's not sitting level. You know, my, this piece, it, it's not straight. Well, this piece is very bendy. Um, this piece is why this frame is so versatile. It allows you to go around all the different kinds of, of bills and, and hats. And so it's, this is how it comes. It's not defective. It, it just is how it sits. And so if you get it and it looks like this, you got the right thing. Okay. Um, will it work on my machine? This is by far the most common question that we get. We have Gen 2s for Bairdens, Happies, uh, PR 600s, PR 1000s, Baby Lock 6 and 10 needles, Brother Personas, ZSK, FWF, Rakoma, Highland, Tajima, uh, Melco. I mean, if you have an industrial embroidery machine, our cat frames will go on it. So um, there's a lot of machines that are made to be like Tajima's. Like if it's a Tajima lookalike, our stuff will work on it. So, um, yeah, it works on all, all industrial machines. Um, can I do the backup hat on the Gen 2? If you just watched our demonstration with Justin, uh, you, you saw that we have two pieces. We believe that if you have just the one frame that comes with the machine, you can do the whole hat. Okay. It's a struggle. Um, but we think that if you do the front of the hat on its own and then the back and sides of the different frame. Um, with our products, you're getting better registration and easier frame up. All in all, you're gonna spend less time hooping the hat, even though you have to hoop it twice. So we just think that it's better and, and there's less wasted hats, there's less throwaway and, and you're just gonna get a better result. Um, what are the benefits of using the Gen 2 versus what you get with your machine? We've been wanting to do a video of this for a long time, just like a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, I am a little spoiled with the Gen 2 because that's what I've always been around, um, at least for the last, I don't know, seven or eight years since we came out with it. Um, but the ones that we have, the ones that came with the machine, they're just, I just feel, I feel like I'm guessing and I'm not a perfectionist. So if you, tell me to hoop it and I don't have like an exact system on how to hoop it. It's probably going to sew out crooked like most of the time, especially for like my personality. Like I just am not a perfectionist. It's not going to look good. The great thing about the gen two is it's just so systematic. You do it. It's perfect. Every time it's easy. It's easy to teach. It's awesome. Um, what style of hats can I do on the gen two? You can do structured hats, unstructured hats, bucket hats, visors, Richardson's, flex fits. I mean, there's, unless it's like a very weird hat that we've never seen and it's not a typical hat shape. I mean, you can do it on the Gen 2. So a really good investment because it is so versatile. Uh, and then what's an override bracket? I told you guys about the override bracket when I did the visor earlier. Let me grab it really fast. Okay, 
this is an override bracket. If you are a PR machine user, or you have a baby lock machine, or you have a persona, um, or a baby lock alliance, you're going to receive this little piece with your um, Gen 2 purchase, as long as we know that that's the kind of machine you have. So if that's the drop down you select when you purchase online, you're going to receive one of these. You install it on your machine. Um, it's going to push down a little sensor with this piece here. Now, what that does is it tricks your machine into thinking that you're sewing on a medium sized hoop instead of a cap driver. This opens up your sew field a little bit. It allows you to sew bigger. Um, the only thing that we say about it is we absolutely recommend always, always, always doing a trace because cap mode protects your machine from trying to sew something too big. Um, and since we're tricking your machine, you got to make sure that you're still sewing something within what your machine can do without hurting your machine, your Gen 2, whatever. So that's the override bracket. Um, I don't know if this jogged any questions for you guys. I'm going to look through here, see if there's any other questions. Um, if you're doing shipping online, you'll select, I would select UPS ground. Um, thanks, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Our phone number is 513-829-7768. We will repost this live to watch later. Is there an adjustment I need to make for the Gen 2 to fit easier to the Melco XTS? I even scratched my machine forcing the Gen 2 on the driver. Hey, Gina, you should send us a video or some pictures so we can see what's happening there. Because, um... We don't normally hear about that issue. So um, sales at hooftechproducts.com. You can um, talk to Justin and Katie about that. Let's see. A lot of you guys are saying thank you. Thank you for us doing this training today. We're, we want to say thank you to you. We're so grateful for your time. Um, I know you guys are all busy, especially with it being close to the holidays. So we hope that this was really helpful and uh, we hope to see you back tomorrow for more training. And like I said, hoopless 10, that's our discount code. It's good till tomorrow night. So if you have absolutely any questions, if you're on our website, we can chat with you. If you want to send us an email, you can do that. Or if you want to call in, that's totally fine too. We'd love to talk you through the process. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to get off here, but we will see you guys tomorrow.